Welcome everyone to um, the weekly um, Ask a Doc podcast. I know we've been slacking off, but for all good reasons, um, just wanted to um, give you guys an update. Um, <clears throat> physical med spa locations for circadian rejuvenation should be coming around hopefully in Q1 in New Jersey and Connecticut, and also kiosk and potential um, partial med spa locations in Florida Q1, um, to specifically in Tampa, Spring Hill, Wikiwachi, uh, Brooksville, and St. Petersburg. So we're very excited about that, um, just to kind of give you guys some insight. And um, AJ is here to like um, let you guys know what he feels about these um, these opportunities moving forward. Pumped up, man. <laughs> A lot of work, yeah. but uh, I mean, you know, right now everything is is going smoothly. We just have a few more um, kinks to kind of iron out. That's kind of how to be expected, though, when you're taking a company and and going national like that in literally three months. Um, but yeah, I mean, everything's going to go as smooth as pie, and it's going to be fun. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 been it's been a a, a very um overwhelming <laughs> um uh four to five months of nonstop work but you know some fell off um but you know what it's what matters is that we kept on pushing and it's you know it's going really really great so without further ado um let's go dig into these um questions from our viewers the first one is relative to shbg um wow. He's saying, uh, what is the significance of SHBG levels for men on TRT? How does SHBG affect injection frequency? Um, also, how often should men with low to, uh, with, uh, with low or high, uh, also how often should men with low or high uh, SHBG affect? How, do, um, how does low or too high values of this marker lead to some other health problems? Sure. So, so SHBG is one of those uh, things. Well, first of all, let's actually go over what SHB, SHBG stands for. It's sex hormone binding globulin. So it's a relative index of the overall exposure to all forms of estrogen. So um, what that means is <clears throat> if levels, as the estrogen levels increase, you're going to see a proportional increase in uh, uh, um, uh, liver hepatic production of SHBG. So the higher estrogen, higher SHBG. So SHBG binds tightly to testosterone. All right. And basically it's a metabolite. Uh, it also binds to its metabolite DHT and it binds more strongly to DHT. Um, it also binds to estradiol. So um, what we use SHBG is to calculate out basically how, how efficiently you're using your, your, your testosterone. So we actually run that in our, in our blood panels. We have that ratio. Um, so we can see how efficiently everybody is, is basically using testosterone. And if they need to be on a more stringent or advanced dose of, um, anastrozole or some sort of anti-estrogen. So, an increase in SHBG results uh, in proportionately less bioavailable testosterone. Okay, does, does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so yeah. higher SHBG, less bioavailable testosterone. Okay. So that's why when, you know, a lot of people say, okay, well, do we want to keep it super high? Do we want to keep it super low? Technically, if you're, you know, in the sport or you're looking to optimize as a male, you want to keep it lower. Yeah, so, lower for performance reasons. Exactly. So, like, whenever I go into comp mode, I mean, my SHBG is pretty much zero. <laughs> I mean, it is, it's bottomed out. And everybody always asks, well, how do you do that? There are means to, to, to do that. Um, Oxandrolone, um, Masteron. Um, you know, things of that nature can, can lower SHBG. Um, but there's no specific peptide or compound that, that we can actually write for, but there's just nothing that can actually 
decrease SHBG. I mean, I've, I've asked, I've asked pharmacies, so I can we compound something to, to, to lower just SHBG? Cause that's for some of the clients is like, that's all we need to do. And, uh, so far I, I've been, I've been blocked from yeah, that. I've even tried with our new pharmacy, uh, with our, with our secondary source pharmacy to, to analyze some of their products to see if any of them could help in that area and not mm -hmm. even them. <laughs> I know. Yeah, much, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's all about that, um, you know, testosterone to SHBG ratio and, you know, andro andropausal symptoms, you know, tired, yeah. lethargy, uh, low libido, um, starting to build a little more belly fat. That's typically just caused by the lower bioavailability of testosterone. Okay. No worries. Um, so the, the other uh, the question now is on initial blood tests. Um, I didn't have my total test ordered for my blood test for my um, TRT company, um, but I did get, um, but I did get my following um, free, uh, my free T at 15.5 PG per ml, my SHBG at 31.6 NMOL per L, uh, my FSH uh, at 2.21 um and he's saying, is like, would this be reasonable enough to go on TRT? Because I'm having symptoms of low libido, ED, fatigue, and low mode. Already tried dieting and exercise and vitamin supplements um, from, from your atypical uh, sports supplement store. But not, nothing has really uh, assisted with my libido, fatigue, and low mode. So can, can you tell me what his uh, total testosterone was again? Was it nan was it nanograms per deciliter? Or what he said that he was like he, he never got his his total testosterone ordered, but his free is fifteen point five, and his SHBG is thirty one point six. His FHH uh, SHH uh, uh, FSH two point two one, mm -hmm. and his albumin um, fifty G per L. Yeah. I mean, what I would recommend is definitely have a, a, a consult with, you know, your primary care physician, first and foremost, tell them, you know, this is, this is what I'm thinking about doing. These are the reasons why we have the blood work there. So if you were to come to, you know, one of our clinics, one of our licensees, we would obviously we'd set you up with a, a medical director appointment. And then from there, yeah, 15 you know, total free test. It's a little low. I don't know his age. I don't think we 29 male, 29 year old male. Oh, 29. Oh, shoot. I mean, yeah. I mean, that that's well within the realm of, of being a uh, testosterone um, candidate, hormone replacement therapy candidate. Absolutely. Especially okay. if you're, especially if you're experiencing those types of symptoms. Um, I mean, we would do with our, with our protocols, we would also test for cortisol. We'd also test for DHEA um, to see if there's anything else going on. Like I said, because yeah, usually, because that's one of the things from a, from an athlete's perspective, and so I've also been a victim of it myself. That um, sometimes it's not necessarily your testosterone. It may be a stress hormone like prolactin, estrogen, or or cortisol that could be the effects that oftentimes lead to a low libido or fatigue. Mm -hmm. um, no, so I, I'm telling you, man. I mean. When you start to, to really break it down, I, I think a lot of uh, dysfunction that people feel is is they only know about the, the the primary things like hormones. They don't understand cortisol. They don't understand DHEA. They don't understand these other um, tertiary exogenous uh, sources that can actually affect libido, energy, lethargy, and all that. Where we have a, a specific test. Where we just we can just test basic molecules and and and, and see where you're at gives a, a much broader picture and then from there we can go into much more advanced testing to to um, to the enzyme level to say hey you're 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 deficient here you're off here your HPA access is 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 off here I, there's a lot more that goes into it than just saying hey here's your bottle of test have a nice day. You know, we want to get into the mental side, emotional, uh, uh, you know, bio biochemical side. All of those factors play a role. Just because you get on testosterone therapy doesn't automatically mean you're going to be 
able to run five miles again, like you were 18 years old, it's, it doesn't work that way. So we, we, we look at each patient as a whole and then we break it down accordingly. Yeah, that's one of the biggest bottlenecks that I've been encountering, at least from the people that I've been um, t- communicating with and bringing um, on board um, to, you know, to our clinic is that um, they they sometimes deal with like endocrinologists or PCPs that have this boiler template of, of, of what they should or should not prescribe. So they'll give them like 200 milligram bottle of, te- uh, of test sip and just be like, hey, you know what, have a great day. And then like, um, don't tell them what, what, what they should take or follow a guideline of like a hundred milligrams a week. And then like a couple of months later, they're still feeling like shit. No, no, no effects. And they're like, what the hell, man? It's like, and they're like, oh, well, that's all we can do for you. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, but what's up with my sex life? What's up with my drive? What's up with my energy? And there's, and there's so many very easy things to do, you know, and I will say, I have to say, everything is based on protocols. Do we have protocols? Of course we have protocols. That's how you start off. That's how you have consistency. Um, So there's always going to be protocols and that's research driven. We have to do it that way. But then from there, it's easy to, to break down the individual. You can be, you know, your N of one in 8 billion people, however many people are on the planet, I don't know. Um, You could be that N of one for this type of disorder or this type of feeling. And we want to break that down and really get to the root cause. So, I mean, that's, that's what you get with uh, all of our protocols. I mean, it's, everything is trademark. I mean, I'm actually looking through our, our, my, <laughs> all of my protocols right now. I mean, I've got, how many pages is this? It's 20 something odd pages of just, Okay, here we go. We're, we're from this point, and then we hit this point, and then we hit this point, and then I have, I mean, all types of directions that we can go off of that. Um, I mean, all the research that I have here. So definitely need to address the whole system, especially if you're 29. Um, yeah, there's, some, there's probably something, there's probably something a little more going on there. Yeah, definitely. Um, now we got one guy, because this was a situation that evolved with us at one point in time. So um, it says... Um, hey, my doctor prescribed syringes um, and needles. Um, I get them normally from um, from them, but recently the pharmacies have been having issues um, um, through either through legalities or regulations in certain states of unable to be um, for them fulfilled. It's like, uh, where can I order um, like needles and syringes? Um, you know that you know that you would suggest um that's just just as much of a viable source i was getting it from the pharmacy i i've i've told them allegro medical um as one source um but if you would know of another one if that does evolve yeah so i would always check with your your pcp or whoever your 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 doctor is um to have those prescribed to you through pharmacy and shipped out but yeah there are a lot of different um legal issues, shipping, surrender, shipping product to, to certain states and whatnot. Um, I'm not going to comment on exactly where to get everything. Um, okay. It's a lot easier than you think. Um, yes, it is. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure it's actually a law that you can't um, withhold syringes and needles from anyone. Um, I, I think it is. Don't, I don't, don't quote me on that, but I can almost guarantee you if you do a little Google search, um, you can find exactly what you're looking for. If, if people, if, if crackheads out in California were, were being given, <laughs> what was it? I don't even know what they were. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's funny you said that because I have one of my friends that's a psychologist and, um, uh, uh, for for recovering drug addicts in, in in Minnesota, and going to a physical pharmacy like a CVS or Dwayne Weed or, or whatever it in Minnesota, they won't allow the person to actually buy it right then and there, um, be, unless you have a prescription from an actual doctor. Mm-hmm. Um, how because of that reason, because of the high drug rate, you know, like you know, like drug addicts and all that stuff, but. If with a, with with a prescription, yeah, you could go into one of these these pharmacies and actually acquire it. But people have been buying it in all sorts of places online. 
I personally chose, I personally told them Allegro Medical because Allegro Medical is a, is a provide, it's, it's a B2B and a B2C uh, component. It's like they also deal with pharmacies and they provide a pharmacies and they have the B2C um, component too. Um, one yeah. question that has evolved a lot. Where to, where to get them from because I, I don't know all the legal stuff with that, but I mean, if companies are shipping them out, you're paying with a credit card, I guess that liability falls on them, but um, yeah. I had this this question pertains to us, but uh, but also all, also other online um, TRT suppliers. Because um, one of the guys asked, it's like, hey, um, I've been reading a lot about this March 2023 deadline for online TTRT supplies. With the news of the March deadline for the Online Control Substance Act being cracked down, um, I'm always nervous about new regulations. I'm wanting to start down the TRT road, but afraid that it might shake up the climate drastically. I just turned 38. All symptoms point to a huge benefit of TRT. I have blood work done at 32 with testing of, of, of 400, which symptoms will only increase. Interested in your thoughts and concern. I understand that the precursor of the new regulations is not TRT, but that I can see some new DEA guy wanting a promotion. <laughs> I'm located in Washington State, so any state clinic's recommendations would be greatly appreciated. I think that the, what he's referring to is the Telemedicine Act, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, at, he's, he's referring to the, uh, the, the when COVID happened, the, the Telemedicine Act, where practitioners could act across state lines and, and prescribe and, and, and do telemedicine calls. So that's actually being extended. Um, <laughs> I feel like this is going to get into a political world here. So I'm going to kind of like, <laughs> okay, lay back. Yeah. Everything, but um, I can almost guarantee you it's, it's going to get extended a few more times just until, I mean, everything is figured out there. Um, but the good news is, is when that all goes away and is done with um, it's more than likely going to fall back to the old rules and those old rules, I believe there were only 15 states that didn't allow uh, telemedicine uh, consultations to be um, to be utilized. It's actually, for, it was actually 12. Remember, it was 38 states and 12 required. Yeah. Well, yeah, 38, so, so states, yeah, 38 are part of the so 30, 38 are part of the, the pact. But I, it was yeah, 12 to 15. Whatever yeah. is how many were how many states require an in-person consultation. So those other states, you can still do telemedicine. So it's it's not that drastic unless you you live in one of those states, which is unfortunate, but you know, we'll probably have a have some sort of brick and mortar to send you guys to. Um, we will be we will be in Washington actually uh, end of next week. So um, we we'll have that ability to prescribe and and do everything out there um but yeah it, it's i'll probably we'll probably have to get that we might actually start an info section on all that stuff because i mean that's if, if people are really looking you know that far into it um just to provide some good information from the pharmacies we work with to put that out there so there's no misnomer because that's the last thing we want to do is start spreading logical fallacies out there and then oh, yeah. have Load and then it's a it's a whole hot mess. Yeah, I've gotten I, I've gotten several questions pertaining to this, and even and even um, and even like patients right now that refer other people for it because they're happy with our service, like you know specifically revolving around this question. So that's the reasons why I wanted to address it in our mm -hmm. podcast. Um, I have here um, two more a uh, couple of more questions. Um, Eclomifit, um He's saying that's like a, a clom with a clomiphene. I've been experiencing um, weight gains. Is clomiphene what causes a lot of bloating and weight gain? I need to shed a few pounds for competition, a jiu-jitsu competition, in a few weeks, and I'm a little bit confused with a small plateau that I'm having. If I stop it, will I shed those few stubborn pounds enough for the competition? I feel that I, I feel that it's actually um, clomiphene what's causing the bloating and the weight gain. Yep. Um, so clomid is a, um, uh, is a hormone or drug that, um, tricks your body into thinking that it's low in estrogen. So, so clomid will help raise FSH to produce more estrogen in your body. And 
yeah, uh, if you're taking Clomid and you're going into a competition, I don't know. Jiu-Jitsu competition, yeah. I don't it's know who, some weight class. I mean, I don't know who told you to do that, but that's not it was, very It's scary. probably part of his TRT protocol, so the person didn't know his <laughs> extracurricular activities. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, because Clomid is going to, it's yeah. meant to boost your it, so you're going to get that soft. When I was in kickboxing and I was in a specific weight class, I would have never taken anything that would uh, retain excess water. And just because of the fact of increased estrogen makes you more susceptible to retaining water, just by default, I would have eliminated that one from my protocol just because of that reason. Um, but then again, people, you know, it's like some people, um, you know, like some people are not self-taught, you know, they, they're um, still, we're not telling you. We're not telling him to change his protocol. Definitely consult with your consult with your doctor first, and, mm -hmm. and hey, what's what is the point of this, and and have them explain to you what this drug is and and how it acts in your body. So we're not telling you to 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 stop taking your medication. That's not what we're doing. But I would definitely raise a question with your primary or whoever is is prescribing that and say, hey, what's the deal here? Why am I having these these symptom side effects? um from this drug and then from there then you can make a an educated um decision with your with your prescribing doctor on, on how to move forward now the last question uh, is relative to estradiol uh how should estradiol optimally relate to testosterone hey guys i've been pinning 120 milligrams of test sip once a week for six months just got my recent labs and my total t is 460 uh, 456 my estradiol at 34. T is down from a six week uh from my six week labs when I was feeling great. Um my total T went up to about 675. My estradiol at 31. My doctor from the local clinic is telling it wants me to bump it up to 140 milligrams a week, but I told him that I began to feel normal um like I did before I started um um before I started TRT. The test results bear that out. I like to be at around a seven to 800 total tests. Is there a percentage or ratio of estradiol to testosterone? Also, I know that there's only one way to find out, uh, but how much difference do you, do you think going from 120 to 140 a week will make specific to estrogen and my total T? So um, sounds like he's, he's got a really good working relationship with his, with his um, prescribing doctor, which is awesome. Um, so definitely uh, take his input, your, your medical doctor there for what it's worth. Cause that sounds like he's actually pretty intelligent there and doing the right thing. Uh, the ratio, all you do is your total testosterone divided by SHPG. And that gives you your, your ratio on basically how effective everything is working. And that should be between 0 0.5 to 2.1 um, nanograms per deciliter. And I okay. don't quote, don't quote me on my, my units, I, I think that's right. Um, so, I mean, it, it, with his ratios, I mean, I think he's, I think he's totally fine, actually. I mean, he's a little lower in testosterone, but I mean, uh, his estrogen is in check. He's for a normal test. I mean, he's at 34, you said, I mean, yeah, I mean, he that's, he's feeling good. So, I mean, that's, that's fine, man. And, and honestly, that's where that subjectivity comes in. We also test for that. Huge, that's a huge part of it. I mean, if you feel good, yeah, I mean, I remember, I remember prior to being on TRT with you guys, um, I, I, I was feeling lethargic. My energy was like, pra like practically nil. Um, and I was at about three and change. I was like at about 320. Now I'm, I'm at about 670 and the lethargy went away. Like, you know, sex drive is good. The energy is there. So you don't necessarily have to be, well, granted, it's like my lifestyle is sedentary because I'm just, the only time I get up off this damn desk is to pick up Max for school um, and to, you know, and to, and to handle groceries or, or, or basic tasks, but mm -hmm. um, it, it suffices. It's like, you know, some people don't need to have, you know, like a 700 or a thousand, um, you know, like uh total total to, uh, a, a test score you know uh it's it's really contingent on it's really contingent on, on how they feel you know so yeah I, mean, no, I agree that, yeah so that said um thank you so much for your time as always uh we'll be we'll reconvene regularly starting on tuesday 
Um, and I'm really looking forward to um, Q1 um, and and our and our facilities opening up. Um, and we'll see what you know. We'll see what ha you know. We'll see how Q1, uh, the beginning of Q1, um, uh, uh, like uh, uh, like uh, what the beginning of Q1 uh, will will show for us pretty soon. I will say it's it's our it's our um, partners opening facilities, not not circadian rejuvenation directly. Okay. Um, our partners will be um, opening several dozen facilities. So. Um, if you're wondering why you're not seeing circadian rejuvenation everywhere, but we can absolutely direct everybody to certain um, clinics and whatnot that need to be directed to um, proper HRT therapies. Okay, no worries. Well, again, thank you so much for your time and until next week. Later, bud. Thank you. All right, bye. Looking for your fountain of youth? Circadian Rejuvenation Med Spa is Charlotte's luxurious one-stop med spa. We offer microneedling, hydra and laser facials, laser hair, scar, and vein removal, cryo skin treatments, medical weight loss solutions, and much more. Visit us online today at circadianrejuvenation.com and give yourself the gift of looking and feeling your best. Book your free consultation today at Circadian Rejuvenation Med Spa. It's not just a service. It's an experience.